Greetings in Christ's name. I can truly echo what Freeman said. I was glad when they said it to us, let's go into the house of the Lord. Seems like it's been a long time. Freeman made a mention that it's been a while since we were here. <clears throat> and it has been two Sundays. Not being here kind of feels like a, a hole in our life. <clears throat> Appreciate having visitors with us this morning. It's <clears throat> blessed in the devotional. <clears throat> and you know, just like always, God uses things and it all his word all intertwines and meshes together and it's a blessing. <clears throat> Title this morning is the use of the use of my tongue. Now <clears throat> I'd like for us uh, to think of at least three different points um, uh, through this message. <clears throat> Is, I don't know what, I guess before, before these points, I don't know what if, if we, uh, if, I, if I talk about the tongue, I don't know what verse your mind goes to right away. <clears throat> unruly, unable to be tamed. <clears throat> okay. That's in James James uh, 3, and you can turn there if you want. <clears throat> so I'll be reading there. But the three points that I'd like for us to think about, <clears throat> you know, often we think, if we think about the tongue, we think that, you know, this, or I do anyway, this, this verse is, the tongue can no man tame, is unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. But what I'd like for us to think about also this morning is that <clears throat> the use of my tongue, using it for good or bad, or not using it when it should be used. <clears throat> we'll start in James 3, verse 1, <clears throat> or verse 3. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet <clears throat> are they turned about with a very small helm whithersoever the governor list us. Behold, or even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. <clears throat> Here <clears throat> we see little things. If we compare that bit, <clears throat> I trust you all know what the bit is that gets put into a horse's mouth. And if you compare that to the size of the horse, I mean that thing is so little and yet with that bit the whole, the horse can be controlled. And if we compare, I'm not sure exactly <clears throat> how small uh, that little helm is on a ship. I don't know the size of it. But <clears throat> maybe that's even smaller in comparison than the bit to a horse and that little helm to the size of the boat the ship, <clears throat> you know, I don't know what that looks like, and, and maybe some of you do, but we've probably, a lot, uh, uh, on the men's side anyway, we've probably all seen what the little prop looks like on an outboard motor, on a boat. You know, that's not a very big, but, <clears throat> you know, and, and if you've ever been on a boat, and, and if you know anything about it, you know, it's all in the way that things turn in, in, in the direction that boat goes <clears throat> or the direction it's spinning. Maybe not all, but a lot of outboard motors have a forward and a reverse. So that makes a difference in direction. <clears throat> kind of like using our tongue for the good or bad. <clears throat> And then it uses our, and then it says that even so, 
And the tongue is a little member, and if we look at it, you know, we compare our tongue to the size of our body, <clears throat> it can boast great things. It can, you know, yeah. Verse 6, the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. Well, <clears throat> I kind of skipped this last sec uh, thing here in verse 5. It says, hold on, great a matter, a little fire kindleth. And you know, that's, that's just, isn't that just another thing to compare is a fire. It starts with a little spark. I mean sometimes yeah there's a big, I mean it's just instantly a big fire but what started it? A little bitty spark ignited it. <clears throat> it's been said fire can be our friend and it can be our enemy. You know if it's in control and I, the tongue's the same way. Can be our friend. It can can be our enemy. <clears throat> Verse seven: For every kind of beast and of bird and of serpent of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. <clears throat> Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either a vine, fig, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you, let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. <clears throat> what? Well, it says the tongue can no man tame. I guess, what hope do we have? <clears throat> we have an almighty God. That's the hope we have. <clears throat> Verse 14, if, But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above. It is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Just listen there. Where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure and peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and of good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. <clears throat> we can't give something that we don't have. And we can't... Um, we can't, we can't control the tongue of our own power. <clears throat> and we've, I think we can all agree that <clears throat> we've all said things spur of the moment that we later wish we wouldn't have said. And you know, <clears throat> if we're really honest with ourselves, it probably ends up being because we're not controlling our we're not taking control of our thoughts the way we should, and it's, it, it came out. But it's not a new thought to us because we, it was in our mind. <clears throat> and we've probably experienced, if we uh, received it, if we haven't done it, that sometimes the same words spoken, depending on the tone of voice, will convey a different message. <clears throat> So it's not, we can't say it's the words, totally. It's the attitude behind them. It's the tone of voice <clears throat> sometimes. <clears throat> Why should we be careful <clears throat> with the words that we use? 
I think in our, <clears throat> kind of entered into it in our Sunday school discussion. Sometimes it's, our life is the Bible, the only Bible that the world reads. <clears throat> Psalm 19 <clears throat> says, The heavens declare the glory of God, the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night into night showeth knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their line is going out through all the earth, their words into the end of the world. <clears throat> down, dropping down to verse 14, it says, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I think there's, uh, according to James uh, 3.8, you know, the tongue can no man tame, it is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. I think the answer to, uh, the key to, to uh, that verse are taken care of, yeah, is it here, this prayer in Psalm 19, verse 14, let the words of my mouth, it's a prayer, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my reading. That we have that prayer to God. <clears throat> That's the only way that, that that tongue can be controlled. If we look at verse 7 in James 3, it says, Every kind of beast and a bird of serpent and things in the sea hath been tamed is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. You know, <clears throat> it takes time. Man has done it. And yet, that little tongue, man has never been able to control it, but God can. <clears throat> but that's also a choice that we make if uh, in our, you know, not just once, but daily. I think that uh, that prayer needs to be on our mind, uh, for me anyway, not just once a day, but many times a day. Let the words of my mouth. But, you know, that's, <clears throat> I like that. It, it, it doesn't just say the words of my mouth, but it says the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight of the Lord. Because <clears throat> that's where I fall short is I is allowing my mind to to wander, and you know nobody knows what I'm thinking. People can't see it. <clears throat> <clears throat> Our words ought to please God. They should be something that praises, you know, words that praise Him uh, as, you know, but to do that, we need to have the meditation of our heart proper because that's going to direct, change our words. That's going to change our life. <clears throat> Would you change the way you live if you knew that every word and thought would be examined by God. That's a, not a thought that's original with me. That's the where it ended. I was like, what? Every, God does that. Would you change the way you live if you knew that every word and thought would be examined by God? Well, God does. I added to that, <clears throat> would you change the way you live if you knew that every word and thought would be examined by God in person at the end of every day? If, if, if God would come in person and have a meeting with each one of us every day to give account of every word and thought. You know, someday, someday that will happen. 
So let's consider that. <clears throat> David asked God here in this psalm to approve his words and thoughts. <clears throat> You know, in the beginning of this psalm, he was he was uh, he was noting the whole creation, <clears throat> and you know, the whole creation expresses God's glory. <clears throat> and I think if we take time to think of the creation, the amazement, the amazing way of the creation that God the way God made everything and it's you know the seasons and the way things um, you know if we if we go out now and in a lot of these fields and you know they're brown and we look at the grass and it's dead how I mean it's life is past the way it looks you know but way down deep there's still life and and God can you know and after after winter, spring comes and green, green, you know, start life comes forth again. Things start growing. In the same way, we look at the trees in the winter time. It's hard to tell. I mean, just glancing at a tree—is it a dead tree? Is it a live tree? Well, we can tell a difference if we, you know. But if a tree has just died, it's it'd be hard to see the difference. Uh, but God can see. God knows. And the same way in our life. God knows what's inside our life. <clears throat> Things that we can hide from people, we can't hide from God. <clears throat> In Proverbs 13, verse 1, it says, A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. A man shall eat good by fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressor shall eat violence. Here's a verse I wanted. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. He that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. That, I didn't, I didn't do a lot of searching on that verse, but I read that verse and <clears throat> he that openeth wide his lips, I guess what that was saying to me was that he that doesn't try to control his what he says, his thoughts, his speech shall have destruction. We can have we can try of our own self and and we probably all realize that if that's as far as it goes, if we just try of our own self, we probably still run into some destruction, some failure. Trust we've all discovered that already. <clears throat> it says, He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. <clears throat> but we realize that that's not, that's not possible ourself. <clears throat> Words are so powerful that silence is sometimes the best, the wisest choice. You know, <clears throat> Having said that, you know, we've, like I said, we've probably all experienced saying things that we wish we wouldn't have said, but you can never take those words back. And we've probably experienced the opposite, not having said something when we should have said something. Or sometimes we, or I find it that way, <clears throat> maybe an hour later, Oh, if I would have just thought about this. Why didn't I think about this? Well, maybe it's because I'm too focused on trying to have the right answers of myself instead of giving it to God. <clears throat> you know, we've We've not mastered self-control. We can't control what we say. You know, we know how hard that is. <clears throat> we know that words can cut and destroy. By what, what it was written there in James. 
<clears throat> and I think, you know, <clears throat> I think the, the beginning of controlling, well, the beginning is obviously conveying our life to God and asking Him to help us. But, um, You know, it's up to us to, you know, we can't help sometimes the things that we think. It's because our, our mind is often spurred to think of something because we see something. And it can lead us in the right direction. It can lead us to in the wrong direction. And, and you know, <clears throat> if it's going the right direction, you know, something spurs our mind and it goes in the right direction and we allow our mind to wander, it's probably going to continue on good things. And there's that's good. But the opposite is also true. If our mind is, if we see something and our mind is spurred to something that is, <clears throat> takes our mind in the wrong direction, then we need to take action and to redirect our mind to something good because it will lead on into destruction. <clears throat> and that's, if we want to, like I said earlier, to control our tongue is, our, 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 our thinking needs to be in the right direction. <clears throat> Matthew 12 <clears throat> says either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt for the tree is known by his fruit. <clears throat> that one question in our Sunday school discussion uh, what, what, can, what can we do or something for, to the effect of the, the world uh, how the world sees our, our, our life, the, yeah, the Christian life or whatever. You know, and that's, <clears throat> you could say, by the fruits we bear. This verse just made me think of that. <clears throat> we expect apples from an apple tree, and the world expects certain things from a Christian, a professing Christian. They can soon, they will soon know if that, if that fruit is genuine or if it's, if it's not. <clears throat> Here's just another verse that tells us what what's in our mind will come out. In Matthew 12, verse 34. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the treasure of his heart Bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. <clears throat> there it just. <clears throat> Do we, have, do we have to explain that verse? I don't think we need to. <clears throat> we will give account someday. <clears throat> our, uh, I guess it just, it just shows our, our words reveal our heart. <clears throat> and we know we can't solve the heart problem, we can't solve that heart problem just by cleaning up our speech <clears throat> because it's, it's not going, that's only a temporary thing. It's not, we're not going to be able to maintain that. <clears throat> we must allow the Holy Spirit to fill us with new attitudes, new motives, control our thoughts. It will, it will show, it will come out. In 
Colossians 4, verse 2, it says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. You know, the first verse here that I read says, Continue in prayer, watch in the same with thanksgiving. And that's it's committing it to God. And then, it can, you know, uh, asking God for opportunity. And then verse 5, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. It said, Using our time wisely, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. And that's... You know, it's it's a choice how 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 I use my tongue. <clears throat> By am I calling out to God for a direction or am I trying to come up with those answers on my own? <clears throat> Words are important, but our life is also important because we can have all the right words, but the world will see our life if it's actually something that's a part of us or if it's just that we know how to say the right words. <clears throat> doesn't matter how much how much sense it makes or how true it is what we say we lose our effectiveness if we're not courteous if we're not poor if we're not living it out <clears throat> we've all we all know to we like to be respected we like, but we, and we also know to get that we must show respect. <clears throat> we like if we're saying something, if people listen, but we have to do the same. We have to listen if people are, if somebody else is talking, not interrupt because I have a better idea. I have a bigger, I have a better story. I have a bigger story. <clears throat> just makes me think of a story that I read last night <clears throat> to the children. This girl had a habit of saying, just a minute, Mommy. And all and then she ran into a problem and she called her mom and all of a sudden it clicked to her mom. She said, just a minute, Susie. You know, <clears throat> Uh, is our how genuine is my is is my Christian life <clears throat> silence if we think of silence you know I thought that <clears throat> I could find something you know that would tell us when to be silent or when to, you know different things or whatever but it pretty well went in one direction, what I could find, <clears throat> you know, or, or tell us when we shouldn't be silent, but it pretty, what I was able to find was pretty well telling, you know, of brought out accounts of silence uh, in the Bible. Job, what did Job say? Didn't he, I, didn't, I didn't read a lot in that account, but it seems to me Job made a mention that you are miserable, comforters or something like that I think but the uh, <clears throat> says they in in my words uh, said they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights and never said a word <clears throat> saw that his suffering was too great for words <clears throat> the commentator said that Well, it just says, often the best response in another person's suffering is silence. You 
Why did Job's friends arrive and just sit there silently? I'd have to read that account to be sure why Job said that they were miser miserable comforters. <coughs> According to the Jewish tradition, <coughs> people who came to comfort someone that was mourning shouldn't speak until the mourner spoke. <coughs> So I don't know, did, Je did Job's friends finally, after seven days, did they say something? And that's why Job said they were miserable comforters. I, I don't know, I didn't look at that. <clears throat> but you know, <clears throat> I guess the thought that I get out of this, uh, after I read this, you know, according to the Jewish, Jewish tradition, you know, sometimes, <clears throat> especially if there's, a, if there's a situation that we've never gone through, we don't know what to say to comfort somebody. And we may say something that is totally doesn't comfort them at all. And, and so, you know, maybe that Jewish tradition was a good tradition. You know, sometimes I think showing up and showing people that we care, that they're going through something, means a lot. We don't have to, our presence can do something that our words aren't able to do. <clears throat> and it's a time to be silent. You know? <clears throat> Another uh, verse where it's to be silent says, be silent and know that I am God. You know, that's in Psalm, I think. You know, <clears throat> say go out and just be quiet and if we think about it <clears throat> even the night creatures their chirping is a melody it, it just synchronizes together it blends together who created all that God did <clears throat> and <clears throat> you know if we're noisy we disturb that if we're silent it continues on <clears throat> Another <clears throat> uh, turn to that in song. Psalm fifty, verse twenty one. These things hast thou done, and I kept silent. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as such and one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before mine eyes. Um, <clears throat> God sometimes is silent. <clears throat> I guess the thought that I get in this is sometimes God is silent. Things happen, things that God doesn't approve of and God is silent. Um, you know, sometimes, I guess, the thought here is that, uh, that w what I'd like to get out of this is that, that we make wise choices in when we're silent or when we're not, or when we should speak. Because <clears throat> here, God being silent doesn't, didn't nece doesn't necessarily mean that he condones it, but that the judgment isn't isn't yet. But sometimes, if we're silent when we should speak, it's it shows approval. Um, I would probably say it's safe to say that if if. Uh, if we approve it, if we approve of it, we will show something. We will have an amen, our head will nod, or something. That people can see that we approve of it. You know, if it's something that we see that is right. <clears throat> and, but if it's wrong, if there's something that's wrong and we don't agree with it, 
if we don't make any response to it, often people will take that as an approval. Not always, but if we just, if I disapprove of something and I just continue to, uh, if I just stay, I guess there again, there's differences. I can disapprove of it and not say a word, but leave the presence. People will know I disapprove. But if I stay and remain silent, and I'm showing approval. I'm not going to say that's always the way it is, but I think there's a time that we need to be we need to be wise to say something when we should. <clears throat> know when to be silent. <clears throat> In our Sunday school lesson, it was um, about you know. Uh, the comment was made that sometimes our life is the only Bible that people read. And you know, <clears throat> we're probably, you probably won't recognize, or most of us won't recognize this account just by the reference in 2 Kings 7. But if I tell you a little bit about it, I think you'll, you'll, uh, you'll recognize it. <clears throat> there were four leprous men and uh, <clears throat> they said one to another, Why sit we here till we die? If, <clears throat> if, we, if we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we, we die also. Now therefore come, let us fall into the host of the Syrian. If they save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we but die. I mean, they looked at it that they didn't have anything to lose. I mean, either... They can stay where they're at. There was a famine <clears throat> because of the Syrians. And this is, by the way, the account where it was said tomorrow at this time, they're gonna, you're going to sell, or there's going to be uh, two measures of barley for a shekel and a measure of fine flour for a shekel. Anyway, <clears throat> so they these lepers decided they didn't have anything to lose by going to these Syrians and seeing if they couldn't get some food. <clears throat> Either way, they were, I mean, if the Syrians decided to save them, they'd, they'd live. If not, <laughs> we're going to die anyway. So, <clears throat> here uh, they decided to go. Uh, they rose up in the twilight to go to the camp, and when they got there, nobody was around. And God had caused the noise that the Syrians heard, and they thought there was many chariots coming, and they all got up and fled. They left everything where it was, and they fled. And these lepers found this. <clears throat> wow, what a find they had. And <clears throat> they, they, it says they, um, they went in one tent, they did eat and drink and carried then silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it. Came back again and entered to another t tent and carried thence also and went and hid it. They were, they were into it. They had found treasure. All of a sudden, they came to their senses. <clears throat> they said if one to another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings. And if we hold our peace, if we tarry till morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come, that we may go tell the king's household. All of a sudden, they realized they had all this stuff they could, they could take, you know, a lot of it. But if they didn't share this good news with somebody, when morning light came, they were going to lose it. Because the Syrians were probably going to come back and what did four men, what chance did four men have? Nothing. Nothing. So they went to the king and they told the king. <clears throat> the king was like, 
oh, this is a trap. I don't trust this. You know. So finally the king said, well, they'll send some people out to investigate it to make sure that, you know, they, they thought maybe if they come out there, the Syrians would come back and get them and have them. But they found it anyway. And that's, and they, and they went out and took it. Uh, and that's why they were selling this barley, two, two uh, measures of barley and a measure of fine flour for shekel. <clears throat> because they, the four lepers used their tongue and shared what they had found. <clears throat> How many people miss out in life because I don't use the, my tongue to share the word of God, to share the good news? And they're, they're starving maybe like these lepers. <clears throat> they could have kept it to themselves. They could have taken enough things probably through that night that they could have sustained their life, you know, that they wouldn't have, they might have died from leprosy, but they wouldn't have died from starvation before all these other uh, or I said the Syrian, uh, Syrian, it was the Egyptians, but anyway, that these, um, that they would have, the Egyptians would have given up, or the, the Syrians would have died from starvation because the Egyptians had taken all this, uh, or had held them in siege where they couldn't get out. And they, but the, these four lepers could have gotten enough in that night to sustain them until there was nobody there to keep the food from them anymore. But they didn't. They shared. And so I guess I, I like to take the spiritual parallel out of this, <clears throat> that we share the good news with the starving people around us, that um, the wonderful news can be spread and people don't die before they have received the nourishment of the gospel. <clears throat> uh, another account <clears throat> for us something to think about is uh, if we look at Jonah. Jonah didn't want to speak. We know the story of Jonah. He turned away. God <clears throat> stopped him. He spent time in the bottom of the sea, inside, inside the belly of a fish. <clears throat> Finally, he went and delivered the message that God told him to deliver. I don't think that he delivered it out of love. He delivered that message because God had got hold of him and he the reason I say I don't think he delivered it out of love, why did he go out and wait, sit down and watch? He's just waiting to see this destruction. But you know, even though he didn't deliver it in the right spirit, it still worked. The message, people got the, the truth, they received it, they believed it, and it worked in their life. <clears throat> I think that it's possible that a person that is a professing Christian could do something that would turn somebody to the Lord. You know, um, God spoke to Jonah. God worked with Jonah. You know, after he had preached the gospel and all the people were saved and God personally worked with Jonah and, and, uh, and Jonah was an angry man. <clears throat> so Jonah delivered the message that he didn't really want to deliver or he didn't want to see the people repent but they repented. <clears throat> God is God can uh, 
work miracles. <clears throat> Jesus' command was uh, in Matthew 28 was to go and uh, teach that all men can hear. Uh, do you know, <clears throat> if we go, whether it's next door or to another country, It's important that we use our tongue to glorify God. <clears throat> and the only way, in closing, to remind us, the only way that we can consistently do that is to, we know no man is able to tame the tongue, but God can. And that's the only way that we can be what God wants us, is if we yield our life fully to Him. <clears throat> Today there are still people that doubt the resurrection, Jesus' resurrection. Um, do you know, <clears throat> I just read this and it kind of, it was a new thought to me. But Jesus appeared to the, to the disciples on many occasions after, after his resurrection, proving that he was alive, looking at the change the resurrection made in the disciples' lives. At Jesus' death, they scattered. They were disillusioned. They feared for their life. After seeing the resurrected Christ, they were fearless and risked everything to spread the good news about him around the world. They faced imprisonment, beating, rejection, and martyrdom. Yet they never compromised their mission. These men would not have risked their life for something they knew was fraud. They knew Jesus was raised from the dead the early church was fired with their enthusiasm to tell others. <clears throat> you know, I guess I never really thought about that. I, you know, it always kind of seemed to me that the disciples, they knew that Jesus was the real one. But, you know, there, it just brings out that they were, at his death, they were scattered. They feared for their lives. But after they saw him, resurrection, they came together. Nothing could put them apart. How, how much faith do I have? I mean, that's, that just shows us they knew it was real. I mean, it was, do I believe what they saw, what they wrote? Do I believe it? Let's kneel for prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you. We're able to be here and gather together to worship you. Help us as we go from here that we <clears throat> use our tongue for your honor and glory. Help us. Give us wisdom that we know what to say, when to say it, and when to be silent. Give us courage and strength, direction, guidance. May your name be glorified and your kingdom built people drawn to you as we go through our life. Just commit this day into your hand. Keep us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to open up for correction, for testimony, whatever the Lord would lay on your heart.